you guys. This is our learning outcome number five, which is the last one from module eight. And we're going to be talking about the different types of muscle fibers. When classifying the different types of muscle fibers, there are two criteria to consider, which are how fast some fibers are going to contract relative to the others, and also how fibers produce ATP. And by using these criteria, we come up with three main types of skeletal muscle fibers. We have what we call the slow oxidative fibers. Next, we have the fast oxidative glycolytic fibers. And lastly, we have the fast glycolytic fibers. These fibers, they can also be abbreviated the following way. So the slow oxidative fibers, they can be classified as SO fibers. The fast oxidative glycolytic fibers, they can be classified as fog fibers. And the last one, the fast glycolytic fibers, they can be classified as FG fibers. Now, if you pay attention to the names, it will tell you exactly how fast or slow these fibers contract. So there's only one that's called the slow oxidative fibers, which they will contract slowly like the name says, and then the other two have fast, so this means that they will contract fast, especially when compared to the slow oxidative fibers. And the next term, which is either oxidative or glycolytic, will tell you exactly how the ATP is being produced. So the SO fibers are going to use the aerobic respiration, which means that they use oxygen and glucose to produce ATP, and they will be resistant to fatigue. The fog fibers, they will use primarily the aerobic respiration, which is the same as the SO fibers, but sometimes they may switch to the anaerobic respiration, and this is why they're called fast oxidative and glycolytic fibers. And because they can use both modes of respiration, then they are considered to be moderately resistant to fatigue. Last, we have the fast glycolytic fibers, which are going to use primarily the anaerobic glycolysis. And these are going to be very low resistant to fatigue, meaning that they get tired very fast. Therefore, we can summarize that the speed of contraction is going to be dependent on how quickly the myosin's ATPase is going to be able to hydrolyze ATP to produce the cross-bridge action, which is the binding of the myosin head with the actin molecule. I put this graph over here on the left for us to remember that for us to be able to have the cross bridge formation, we need to have the hydrolysis of ATP into ADP and the phosphate group. And for you to be able to break this cross bridge, you need to have more ATP coming in, which will then allow the myosin head to caulk again, and this will allow the actin filament or the thin filament to move and therefore cause the contraction. So this is why it's important to have ATP available for contraction. Therefore, from what we have talked about already, we can say that the fast fibers, they're going to be able to hydrolyze ATP approximately twice as quickly as the slow fibers. And this will therefore result in a much quicker cross-bridge cycling. Now, the primary metabolic pathway that's used by a muscle fiber will also determine whether the fiber is going to be classified as an oxidative or a glycolytic. And if the fiber primarily produces ATP through the aerobic pathways, it's going to be the type of oxidative fibers. More ATP can be produced during each metabolic cycle, making the fiber more resistant to fatigue. Now, when we have the glycolytic fibers, primarily they will create ATP through anaerobic glycolysis, which produces less ATP per cycle. And as a result of this, the glycolytic fibers are going to fatigue at a quicker rate because you will not have as much ATP available. 
Now, most skeletal muscles in a human contains all three types, although they're going to be in varying proportions. And the fact that the SO fibers can function for long periods without fatiguing makes them useful in maintaining posture, for example, also in producing the isometric contractions, which, as we know, are the constant contractions that do not change the size of the muscle. They're also important for stabilizing bones and joints and making small movements that happen often but do not require large amounts of energy. They do not produce high tension, as you can imagine, and thus they are not used for powerful fast movements that require high amounts of energy and a fast rate of the formation of the cross bridge. But these SO fibers, since they use aerobic respiration, they will produce way more ATP and therefore they're going to be more resistant to fatigue so they won't tire as fast Contrary to the ones that use anaerobic respiration, these will produce less ATP and therefore the ATP won't be as available and they will fatigue faster. In addition, they will be using the ATP much faster. And therefore, they're going to be running out of ATP, which then makes them more tired. So to summarize, the bottom line is that you can't have the best of both worlds. Either you hydrolyze ATP fast, and therefore you have a fast contraction, or you have a lot of ATP, and therefore you don't get tired as fast because you're able to use the ATP over time. I like this table because it summarizes all the different characteristics of each of the fiber muscles. And there's one on this slide and one on the next slide. And this allows you to understand how the fibers function according to their characteristics. As we can see, the diameter of the fibers are going to be smaller for the slow oxidative fibers, and then they sort of become bigger as we move on to the fast glycolytic fibers, which makes sense as the fast glycolytic fibers are going to be important for mass movement, right? But in a short period of time. Myoglobin content is going to be large where you have the oxidative fibers, independent if it's slow or if it's fast, because that's the molecule that will carry the oxygen. And if you have oxidative form of respiration, then you need oxygen. So you're gonna have large amounts in the SO and in the fog, and then small amounts in the fast glycolytic. Same thing with mitochondria, because that's where the energy source will come from. So you're gonna have many and many for the first two, and then few for the next one. Same thing with capillaries, because the oxygen is going to be circulating through the capillaries. So if you have more oxygen available, it means that you're gonna have many capillaries. If you have less oxygen, then you're gonna have less capillaries. Same thing with the color. The more blood you have circulating, the darker the red will be. So for slow oxidative, it's going to be very red. For the fast oxidative glycolytic, it's going to be red pinkish. But the fast glycolytic, because it has less blood circulating, because there are less capillaries, then it looks a little bit more pale. With regards to the capacity for generating ATP, of course, if you have the oxidative phase, then you're going to have a high capacity. If you use both oxidative and glycolytic, then it's going to be an intermediate. And if you just use glycolytic, then you're going to have a low capacity because mainly it's going to be using anaerobic glycolysis. Now, with regards to the rate of the ATP hydrolysis, the SO fibers are going to be slow, meaning that they're going to form less cross bridge between the myosin and the actin. And on both the fast oxidative glycolytic and the fast glycolytic fibers, it's going to be fast because they're going to be able to break down ATP faster and therefore they're going to be able to form the cross bridge 
between the myosin and the actin even faster, so they'll be able to contract at a faster pace. But since they have less ATP available, they will not be as resistant to fatigue as the slow oxidative fibers are. Remember that they don't have the best of both worlds. They have to choose one or the other. Therefore, on this slide, if we go down the list, it will continue to make sense. So contraction velocity, the slow fibers, it's going to be slow. The fast fibers are going to be fast. With regards to fatigue resistant, I talked already on the previous slide, but slow oxidative fibers, they are very high resistant to fatigue because they have a lot of ATP and they don't hydrolyze the ATP as fast as the others. And as we move on down the list, the fast glycolytic fibers are going to have a low resistance to fatigue because they don't have enough ATP available. If you use aerobic respiration, you're going to have low amounts of creatine kinase. And if you use anaerobic, then you're going to have high amounts of creatine kinase. Same thing for the glycogen storage. With regards to how these fibers are recruited to contract the muscle, they will start first with the slow oxidative fibers, then the fast oxidative glycolytic fibers are recruited, and last you're going to have the recruitment of the fast glycolytic fibers. With regards to the location of these fibers and the function, I did talk a little bit about how the SO fibers are going to be important for maintaining the posture. So they're going to be located on your back and on the neck. With regards to the fast oxidative glycolytic fibers, you're going to find them mainly in the lower limbs. These are for walking and sprinting. And then the upper limbs are going to contain mainly the fast glycolytic fibers which are going to be working for this rapid, intense movement that will last a short period of time, like lifting weights, for example. As we can imagine, physical training will alter the appearance of the skeletal muscles by making them larger, and also, as a consequence of this, it can produce changes in muscle performance. The more you work out, the better your performance is, right? No one can question this. In contrast, a lack of muscle use due to a person either being sedentary or if a person gets injured and can't move for an extended period of time, this can result in a decreased performance and also in a decrease in the size of the muscles as well. Although muscle cells, they can change in size, New cells are not formed when muscles grow. Instead, they are going to be these structural proteins that are going to be added to the muscle fibers in a process that's called hypertrophy. And in this case, the cell diameter is going to increase, but there is no addition of new cells. And what are these structural proteins? Well, we talked about them already. These are going to be the titan, the myomesin, the nebulin, and the dystrophin which are the ones that are going to contribute to the alignment, the stability, the elasticity, and the extensibility of the myofibrils, remember? Now the reverse, when structural proteins are going to be lost and muscle mass decreases, this is going to be called atrophy, which is what we have here on this graph. On the right side is an atrophied muscle. You can see how it's smaller when compared to the muscle on the left, which is a normal muscle size. Now, age-related muscle atrophy is called sarcopenia, and this usually starts around the age of 40 with a very linear decrease, which will result in an individual losing about 50% of skeletal muscle mass and skeletal muscle strength when they get to be 80 years old. And the best way to prevent sarcopenia is to make sure that you do lots of exercise with specifically resistant training and also strength training. As these activities, they will increase the muscle strength and also the endurance 
when you use weights or resistant bands. In addition, the resistance training, they can also help your neuromuscular system and their hormones. So everything will be beneficial when you do these resistant exercise trainings. Therefore, we can conclude here that slow fibers are going to be predominantly used in endurance exercises that are going to require little force, but that will involve numerous repetitions. And since these fibers are resistant to fatigue, the runner is able to run farther by developing more of these slow fibers. In contrast, the resistance exercises, as opposed to the endurance exercises, they're going to require large amounts of fog fibers to produce short, very powerful movements that are not repeated over long periods of time because they do tend to fatigue faster.